most powerful system on the planet, yet it is often perceived as the most taboo subject to discuss. World-renowned activist and best-selling author Tariq Nasheed takes on this challenge head-on in his new book, Foundational Black American Race Beta. This is the most important book you will need in order to understand the mechanisms of systemic racism and how to counter this system. Get Foundational Black American Race Beta now at Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com. Also get limited autographed collector's editions of the book at OfficialFBA.com. What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Tariq Radio. And I am your gracious host. My name is Tariq Nasheed. Glad to have everybody tuning in. Ready to chop up game as we always do. Let everybody know that we're broadcasting live right now, ladies and gentlemen. Let everybody know that we are kicking in high gear, making it do what it do. And what we're going to do, family, we're going to take a very quick commercial break and while we're taking a a commercial break let everybody know that we're live I want y'all to um, retweet this put this all in your Facebook let everybody know that Tariq Radio is live right now and don't move a muscle because we will be right back after these important messages don't you move a muscle ladies and gentlemen listen up squares You need to get the legendary book on game, The Art of Mackin', by author Tariq King Flex Nasheed, available on Amazon right now. Can you dig it? This book has been a bestseller for 20 years, Jack, and the New York Times called it a classic. That means it's out of sight. So this book ain't for no lames who ain't trying to learn the game, jive turkeys. So if you're ready to stop slacking in your macking, get the Art of Macking book on Amazon and Barnes and Noble right now, sucker. Rated PG. That stands for plenty of game, jive chumps. Hey, black nerds out there. Are you tired of nerdy platforms that refuse to acknowledge white supremacy and geek culture? Do you seek a black nerd podcast that not only covers nerdy topics such as anime, movies, video games, and TV shows, but also black empowerment? If so, then head over to the world's first and only black nerd empowerment podcast, The Swirly Nerd, on YouTube. Join the host, the TV guru, and Yuki Stoneman every Tuesday and Saturday on their mission to provide information and empowerment to black nerds everywhere. Again, that's Swirly Nerd. Swirly is spelled S-W-A-R-T-H-Y, nerd.com. Are you a black male new to the corporate environment and you don't know what to expect? Are you tired of not getting the credit you deserve at work? Are you fed up with office politics? Are you being sabotaged by coworkers? Are you often stressed at the office? Do you wish there was a better way to solve problems in the workplace? If so, look no further than A Black Man's Guide for Working in Corporate America. That's a book by author Ken Woods. It gives a comprehensive guide on how to navigate your way through the workplace, and it gives specific examples on problems that you might encounter and provides suggestions and strategies on how to solve them. So get the book right now, A Black Man's Guide for Working in Corporate America, available right now on Amazon. Family, you need to check out this new movie that's coming out called New Orleans 2030. This is a brand new documentary film that's coming out by filmmaker Tyrese Terrell McKnight. And this is a film that talks about the black population decreasing every year in New Orleans because of gentrification that's on the rise. And it talks about how the city is going to look in 2030. 
The film features politicians, state representatives, council members, and other people in office, and it's a very deep film about how gentrification harms the black community in these cities like New Orleans. So you can check out the movie at the Joy Theater in New Orleans, premiering June 10th, 2023 at 7 p.m. Get tickets at universe.com or get it from Instagram, Truth the Filmmaker, Instagram at Truth the Filmmaker right now. Bro, stop playing and start spraying. Leave an op on the ground where you stand. At all costs, yeah, make sure you protect it. Old goon juice, the formula been tested. You can defend yourself if you find that you need a little help. Gotta stay ready, ain't no love in the street. Pepper spray straight to the face, make them get weak. Get it at ogoonjuice.com. If they think it, you slipping, then tell them to come get them some. If you packing this, you won't be lacking. But shot to the eye in them problems you having. Maximal strip hit them haters on ground. So you can feel free when you out in the town. Ogoon Juice and don't forget a shirt, man. You gotta stay ready. That evil on lurk. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. You are now tuned into the legendary OG. OG. Tariq Nasheed. Oh, what the hell about this? To all my friends. On Tariq Radio. 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 Where is Tariq getting all this cash? That's my bad boy. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. I'm here. I'm your gracious host. I'm Tariq Nasheed. Glad to have y'all tuning in. We're back. Can you guys hear me clearly? We good? Everything good? Y'all hear me good? My sound is good? Everything is good, right? Just want to make sure everything is popping like it's supposed to be popping. How y'all living, man? Glad to have everybody tuning in. I'm here with the family. Usually I do the shows on Wednesday, but I'm here. Usually I do it we're on back. Wednesday, but I'm here. We're back, we're back. I'm just testing my audio here. Hold on. I'm here. I'm your gracious host. I'm Tariq Nasheed. Making sure my audio was good. Okay, I'm good. Everybody good? I'm good. I'm good. All right. So look, look, guys. We got to chop it up tonight. We got to chop up some good game on tonight's broadcast, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Yeah, somebody's talking about uh, the, the situation with John Amos. And that's what we got to do a whole show about that. John Amos's daughter went around doing a GoFundMe talking about he's a victim of elder abuse. And she did a video and put up a GoFundMe for her dad. And people were like, damn, what's going on? And um, John Amos came out and said, ain't shit wrong with me. <laughs> I don't know why she put up a GoFundMe. John Amos was like, ain't nothing wrong. I'm fine. So, look, there's a lot, man. There's a scandalous energy out here, man. There's some some sack chasing, as they used to say back in the day. There's a sack chasing, clout chasing energy that's out here, man. That's insane where people will clout chase and sack chase off their own parents, man. You dig? It's a real weird vibe out here, dude. A lot of folks are pulling these real funny ass twists out here, man. It's real funny style. But, um, yeah, the Zion Williamson story. Yeah, this dude, man, I have to do a whole new broadcast about that. This dude got, he got one baby mom. He was posting up pictures with his baby mom. And then some porn chick popped out of nowhere talking about he was supposed to be with her. And she has a botched BBL and um, this crazy surgery. The game is getting raggedy out here. And social media has made the game raggedy. You know, if, if you were in the streets, man, if you had any foot in the game, you had to be somewhat stomped down. You had to have kind of a demeanor that was semi-reputable even in the streets back in the day. I know Zion is a simp. I know he, he could be a simp, but that's beyond the point. The game is so raggedy because you got the OnlyFans thing popping off. You got all of this other stuff where people in the game can make paper without actually getting out here on these bricks interacting with folks on the streets like that so the game has turned real raggedy so you got these people that will do any and everything 
scandalous as hell. Everything they they cutthroat stuff you couldn't get away with in the streets. You can do the cutthroat stuff online, but you couldn't get away with it on the streets. It's real, real raggedy. It's hella raggedy. And the simp targets are getting bigger. Boy, the simping. The simping is getting bigger, dude. Messing with these struggle porn actresses, dude, and y'all sitting on all this paper. Man, you got to understand it's not worth it, man. When you're sitting on big paper, certain people you just can't have around. Unfortunately, you got to understand that that's, that's a part of the game. And certain people, man, even if they ain't in the game, just certain people you just can't have around. You just have to move different when your, your money situation is in a different stratosphere. Just like John Morant, man, he's running around with his old homies, flexing guns and all of that, man. You got to change your, your whole vibe up, dude. Unfortunately, I know a lot of us want to keep it real and be down, but you got um, a lot of people who are predatory, a lot of people that will influence you to do the dumb shit and lose whatever you have. Unfortunately, it's a very unfortunate thing. It's a very, very unfortunate thing. People want me to come on live. Do y'all want to see me? People asking me to come on live. Do y'all do y'all want to see a player? Do y'all want to see me? That's what y'all saying. Because I'm chilling. I can be cool in the background. I hope it's women asking it. Hope it ain't no dudes laying on their stomach like, where you at, Tyree? But I don't see you. Where you at? I tuned in for nothing. Hold on. Now, are these women asking this? Some of these screen names are very questionable. Hold on now. Hold on. Because the nigga sitting in there doing a split, talking about he want to see me on camera. I don't know. I might have to stay behind the scenes. You dig? Uh, the motherfucker named Larry talking about, hey, I'm trying to see you. I'm not trying to get on for you, Larry. All right. Uh, let's let's just get this energy right. Let's get the right energy here. All right, let's just be very clear. Let's get, we got to get the energy right. All right, here I am. God damn it. <laughs> All right, I'm here. I'm here. All right, so I don't want no weird energy going on here. I don't want it. All right, I'm here. Shout out to the people who um, made this shirt. I didn't even make this shirt. Somebody, um, they, um, what's the company that made this shirt? I actually, they didn't even send it to me. I bought this shirt. I like this shirt. Where's your FBA family from? I love this. Where's your FBA family from? I love this shirt. I actually bought it. They didn't have to send it to me for free. I bought this one. But um, look, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. And, and listen, by the way, we're having the... Juneteenth celebration, ladies and gentlemen, at the Hidden History Museum. Um, June 17th, we got um our good sister, our FBA sister, Chef Marilyn. She's gonna cater it. Where are my LA people? Y'all know how Chef Marilyn gets down. Chef Marilyn is a legend out in LA, South Central LA. Phenomenal food. So she's gonna cater this one. She catered our grand opening. Phenomenal. So this one's gonna be catered by Chef Marilyn. We're gonna have barbecue. Her food is off the chain. Well, um, I, the vegan options, if you're vegan, you might just have to eat the sides because I I, I didn't, I, I couldn't think of any vegan barbecue options. So look, we're gonna have some ribs, barbecue ribs, barbecue chicken, and they're beef ribs, no pork. If you don't eat beef, you can eat the chicken. If you don't eat meat, you can eat the um, sides. We got potato salad, um, then green beans, baked beans, cornbread. So it's a good spread. We got a great spread, man. Y'all got to come have Juneteenth dinner with me at the museum. And we got a a, a lot of great comics that's going to be up. Shout out to my brother Dwan B. We got a lot of um comics that's coming through. It's going to be a very great night. Good music and the whole nine. And also people, y'all been asking me about um, being sponsors for some of these events. A lot of people have been asking about that, and that's something that I, I, I'm I going to extend to people because they have been asking. Because we get a lot of media coverage whenever we do these events, and plus people, when we um, send out these releases for the flyers and all that and let the, the media know that we're doing these events, you know, that gets significant press. 
if you are a black business or any business, whatever, but I'm particularly talking to the brothers and sisters because we need to start getting our networking on. Uh, we need to continue what we were doing down there in Dallas with the, the, the black business networking. If you want to be a sponsor for this particular event, and we're going to do this for a lot of our events, you guys, there's a link right here. Hit the sponsorship thing where you can either get on the flyer, you can become one of the main sponsors where we got your website and your thing and everything all up during the event. It'll be the Juneteenth event presented by your business. So we got we got those kind of opportunities going on. So y'all go in the um, link right here. Go below. Y'all look below. Look for sponsorship opportunities for the Hidden History Museum events and click that. If you want your business promoted, and we got reasonable rates, ladies and gentlemen, very reasonable rates. But let's get into what we're talking about. And again, if y'all want to come to the Juneteenth celebration, go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Yes, we got to share yeah, because I noticed we got a lot of press people and a lot of media people. They've been coming in this week and they're going to be coming in all next week, too. And um, they're doing television exposés. And I would like for some, hell, some of your, your websites and your businesses to be promoted. You, you dig? That would be an opportunity to just promote different black businesses within the museum. We're already going to be promoting our stuff. So it would be good to, to get some press for everybody else, too. So, again, go to um, HiddenHistoryMuseum.com and there's a link for that. But listen, listen. We're talking about... Is it another, is it time for another pull-up summer? Yeah? It's time for another pull-up summer, ladies and gentlemen. It is time, or is it time? I'm asking you guys. And every, look, retweet this. Let everybody know we're in here. We almost got 3,000 people in here already. Let everybody know that we're in here. But listen. We're seeing, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of these cases where black people are just being blatantly murdered by suspected white supremacists. And the dominant society, they're all getting on code. See, this is why I want us to get on code heavy. I want us to start getting super duper on code with each other, networking with each other, vibing with each other, understanding the importance of us having a communications and a business network with each other so that we can support each other, especially in times of need. It's very important right now, man. We got to get that grapevine network going back again. Because the dominant society, they got their little network of white supremacy. That's all it is. It's a white supremacist network. We saw in New York, Brother Jordan Neely got strangled by that suspected white supremacist. They all got on code to try to protect the suspected white supremacists. Remember, it was the grassroots, us, the grassroots media. We were the ones... And I hate to brag, but I'm going to I'm going to give us props just to let you know how important it is to have a grassroots grapevine network to give you information. And that information spreads to large audiences because we were the first ones to reveal that guy's name. Remember the white media. were going to protect that dude to the very end. They were not going to release his name. I released that dude's name. It blew up all over the place. Then the very next day, the mainstream media, they were forced to say, okay, yeah, that's him, which they knew all along. They knew exactly who he was. If I found out, that means they knew too. All right? I just put it on out there. They were on code with each other. You understand? And then when the jig is up, they had to go ahead and arrest the guy and charge him. Reluctantly. Out there in, was it North Carolina or South Carolina, 14-year-old black kid 
gets killed by an Asian store owner. The white supremacists wanted to get on code with that, but the brothers and sisters out there started turning up a little bit at that damn um, convenience store that the Asian guy owned. The brothers and sisters turned up, they pulled up, and they let everybody know that pull-up season is here. This is only the beginning. We can get this popping all summer. So what you're trying to do? So they, you're South Carolina, thank you so much. Columbia, South Carolina. So they had to go ahead and arrest and charge that guy. Yeah. Now, down here in Florida, suspected white supremacist woman was out here harassing black children. They always got to target the black children. She was out here harassing these kids. From some of the reports, she was calling them racial epithets. Um, I've heard different stories about her throwing stuff at the kid or kids. One of the kids, I think she took his iPad and broke the iPad or whatever. And then the mother of the child went to the woman's house to get the iPad. This suspected white supremacist woman shot through the door and killed the sister. This was a mother of four, A.J. Owens. And boy, the, the police, the sheriff, the media, all of these people tried to get on code and protect that woman. They didn't arrest her. They were splaining for her. And they were, the media start throwing out the stand your ground. This ain't no damn stand your ground case. This woman shot through a door. That ain't got nothing to do with stand your ground. That's the opposite of stand your ground. You were safe in your house. And she shot through a damn door and killed that sister. And they got on code with that woman. I just want y'all to understand. See, the white supremacy comes after the fact. How do they handle this stuff? They were trying to explain. They were trying to explain for this woman. And the sheriff, he walked out with a bunch of Sambos trying to explain. Let me find that um, press conference with the sheriff real quick. Let me find that real quick. What's that sheriff's name down there in... Um, in Florida. What's that sheriff's name? Guy, help me out with his name. What's that sheriff's name? What's his name? Because I want to show you the initial press conference where he was trying to explain. What's that sheriff's name? Hold on. Somebody said she, um, her, her first name is Ajiki, something like that, but her last name is Owen, so I think she might be FBA. She just had, her mom just gave them like African first names, but I think she's a foundational black American. Billy Woods. Billy Woods, yeah, that old good old boy, Hick. Yeah, he thought he was going to be slick. Yo, know, Billy Woods thought he was going to be slick. Hold on, where's his, um... Okay, yeah, wait, wait, wait. Let me. Ah, come on, ah, come on. I want to hear all that. Hold on, da, 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 da. hold on one second. Let me see yeah, something. Anyone... Let me see that press conference. Yeah, he thought he was gonna be slick. Hold on. Where's the the? Okay. Hold on one second. Let me find news conference. Hold on one second. Because I want to see the the first one he gave because now he's trying to all lives matter see they always do this stuff where's the one I'm trying to find the one where he had all these negroes around him ah uh, where's this dude come on man this week okay I'm trying to find the one where he had all the negroes standing oh here it is I think this is it right here yeah he thought he was gonna be slick look at this right here hold on hold on right here this one right here these things have, they call one side. Oh, yeah. Look at, listen to the splaining they were trying to do. All right. This is what I'm looking for right here. Look at this here. So, yeah, he, they thought they were, this was a few days ago before they arrested her. So they got some random Negroes. 
He's out here splaining. Hold on. Listen, listen to the splaining. Hold on. Hold on. Basically been a neighborhood feud over time. I've got reports that these things have, they've called one side or the other. Either the mother, Ms. Owens, has called or a shooter has called. Now, look, he got a bunch of people of color behind him. I want y'all to notice that. He got a bunch of people of color behind him. All right. He they think they're slick. He got what six black people behind him. One looked like an Asian man and the other redneck white cop. So he got a whole bunch of people of color behind him. He think he's going to be slick. All right. Complaining about the children. I wish our shooter would have called us instead of taking actions into her own hands. Now, how you what? Who says that about somebody? Wish the shooter would have called us. What kind of splaining is this? I wish the killer would have called me. Yeah, I wish the killer would have called us first. What kind of damn splaining is this? You never hear this for a black person. A black person shoots somebody. Whoa, I, I wish Donnell had called us before he took the um, matters in his own hands as if she's some type of deputized member of law enforcement. You see, listen how they're talking. I wish the shooter would have called us as if she's a member of law enforcement. You see how they get on code with each other? Hold on. Hold on. I wish Mrs. Owens would have called us. And hopes we She did call. She did call the police on that woman and y'all didn't do nothing. We could have never got to the point in which we are here today. My Bullshit. The sister did call the police on that woman. They didn't do anything about her. What is he talking about? He wished she would have called. She called the police on that that suspected white supremacist. He even admitted it. So what is he talking about? Hold on. My hopes is it will be resolved quickly. As in all of my cases. Sometimes my hopes and the path in which they are are not equal. Or they don't always agree. Oh, the splaining, the splaining, the sp Listen to all the, they're caping for that woman. Well, I hope things will, no, if a black person shoots somebody, we're going to get that Negro. We're gonna prosecute that Negro to the letter of the law. If a black person kills somebody, you won't hear all that hope and I wish and well, both sides were in the wrong and well, both sides was a back and forth. It was a, you don't hear that. They're going out of their way to cape for that woman. And they were not going to release her name. Remember, they were protecting her ass and they were not going to release her name. They were going to sit up here and play this game. Just like they did with the man up there in um, New York. They weren't going to release his name until we released it first. They kept playing that. Well, we don't, we don't know. The police didn't tell us what the name is. So we, we don't know what the name is either. Oh, yes, you do. And we found out the name, too. We put the name out there. Oh, yes, we did. Oh, we put that name out there. Let me show you. I put that. I was one of the first people who put that name out there on a nationwide level. Right here. That was my tweet. Got a million, almost a million and a half views. Suspected white supremacist woman in Florida, Susan Lorink. I put that name out and the face. You dig? And then the next day, the well, the next couple of days, because they were pissed, they had to go ahead and release her name finally, and they had to go ahead and arrest her. Even some of the, the um, Yahoo, they had to acknowledge. They had to put my tweet up. Yeah, Yahoo News got up on it, and they got my tweet up where I, I put her name out there. You dig? This is why grassroots media is very important, ladies and gentlemen. This is why grassroots media is very important. And now they had to go ahead and arrest her because everybody found out who she was and it is pull-up season. You see, part of white supremacy is being 
doing your deed and then hiding your hand, being almost anonymous to a certain degree. Now, when you start shedding the light on these people, you, sent me messages, you know, sent me emails, that's her. Me and, and look, look at how sad they look having to arrest her. Look how sad they look. It's like they're arresting their mama. It's like they got to take their mama to jail. Encouraging the arrest. Look at them. Oh, you know, they bought us some Burger King. Oh, um, mom, you okay, mom? Mom, you want something to drink, me, mom? Oh, they were treating her like their mama. They were looking so sad. Oh, yeah, that's that. They look at these people as their family. That's a, that's a representation of their mama. Their mama acts like her. Oh, you okay, mom? You want some boysenberry pie while you're in custody, mom? So they had to go ahead and arrest her. They gave her a man manslaughter charge. The charge were a little. The charges were a little janky. But again, shout out to the grassroots for being on this case. For staying up on it. It's very important for us to be on top of these types of cases. And shout out to Ajiki's family because some of the family members, they did a smart thing. And I, I encourage all family members to do this. They start contacting people within the grassroots and let, let us know who their names are early. So some of the family members started coming out here because what happens is the mainstream media, when something like this happens, no, she's, from what I understand, she's not Nigerian, by the way. See, what happens is when these things happen, the mainstream media, they don't really go to the family unless there's a coon. When uh, a black person is killed, the mainstream media, they're not going to interview the family unless they find a family who's out, a member who's out here forgiving everybody. That's the only family member they want to talk to. They only want to talk to the Sambo who's up there. Well, Lord, that's crazy. He shot my family, but I shows forgive him. And they'll put you on all of the major news channels. But some of the family members who ain't cooning and shout out to her family from what I've seen. Shout out to her mother and God bless her mother. Her mother seems like she's on code. The mother seems like she's on code for the, for the most part. Yeah. I don't think she's Nigerian, though. But but either way, you know, I'm not even tripping on that. We're not tripping on that because we want justice for that sister. So nobody should have shot that sister through no damn door. And um, she has a bunch of small kids. She has four small kids, from what I understand. Yeah. No, I don't think she's Nigerian, to be honest. We're not, we're not with the last name Owens. But listen, family. This is why... It is very important for us to have our networking institutions. We have to network, man. We have to get out here. We have to look out for each other. Pull-up season is sometimes necessary. We have to get out here and make sure that we're okay because we have too many white supremacists within law enforcement. They're not giving us the protection we need and we have to nudge them along to make them do the right thing. We are the ones on the grassroots. We have to nudge law enforcement along to make them do the damn right thing. You understand? And when we talk about pull-up season, because people start talking about pull up this, pull up that, and you have buffoons out here who start using the term pull up in the wrong context, not knowing what the damn pull up game is all about. Pull ups ain't about announcing what the hell you going to do to the enemies ahead of time. You know, pull ups just happen. You think watch people who try to sit up here and set up so-called pull-ups where the enemy knows when and what time the pull-up is going to happen. That ain't no damn pull-up. You're, you're walking into a damn ambush, basically. And also, watch out for folks in the dominant society who try to tell black folks certain things that we need to do, try to egg us on. 
for certain things. I saw a white guy, he did a video about um, gun control. He gave his advice on how gun control can go down in America. And I saw some black people kind of co-signing this guy, but no, this is not what you do. Listen to this guy here. Hold on one second. That black people can give America gun control. Listen to his theory on how to give America gun control. Hold on. Listen to this. Hold on. You want gun control in this country? I'll tell you what, black people, you all need to start exercising the same gun rights as white people, carrying them everywhere, getting open carry, going to every march carrying guns. Form an organization. It doesn't have to be called Black Panther, something else. It could be called the Pink Party or whatever. But here's why. When black people are organized and they are carrying guns, and they have a name to it. So if you hurt one of them, all of them are mad. White people are gonna start taking away gun rights from everybody, I promise. This is the only way it's gonna happen. That's how racist our fucking country is. It's the only way it'll happen. Not even killing their kids at schools. This will be the way. Racism. You want? Okay, now did you catch that? Okay. Okay. Did you catch that? Um, no. No, sir. <laughs> no. We're not going to do all that. And I saw some black people sitting up. Yeah, did you tell the truth, white man? No. <laughs> For a couple of reasons. Number one, I want us to have guns. There's nothing wrong with guns. Especially in a system of white supremacy. Oh, guns are fine. I ain't got no problem with no damn guns. Guns are fine. Guns are perfectly fine. There's no problem with guns. Number two, this whole thing about if we just form these organizations and we start walking around with guns, that's going to make them um, have gun reform. No, it's not. It's going to let them know exactly who to target. No. That's going to let them know exactly who to target. That's not what you do. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't go out here forming all of these damn open organizations like that. No, that is not what you do. Because the white supremacists are going to get a bunch of broke, dusty niggas to infiltrate it. There's too many dusty, jealous, buster-ass niggas out here who will infiltrate any black organization. They're going to get a bunch of tethers to, to cosplay as FBA to infiltrate. No. It will be infiltrated overnight, just like the Black Panthers. You dig? So we got way more tethers than they had back then. So you got fools out here just waiting to infiltrate. That won't work. Yeah, times have changed. Yeah, you, you don't do that. Hell no, you don't do that. You gotta be covert. That's why the pull-up thing is very important it's very strategic you don't have an organization motherfuckers just show up that's how you do things you just kind of show up and make sure things are taken care of you just show up and produce justice ain't no organization ain't no group nothing you show up and produce some damn justice and then go on about your business yeah don't let nobody talk you into sitting around in a meeting with wires and everybody's wearing a damn wire. <laughs> Stop. Hey, guys, when is we going to pull up on all these crackers? I suggest we do it at 530 on Tuesday. And we start downtown in Memphis. Just start busting on crackers. <laughs> all right. All that shit is getting fed into, <laughs> into the federal system, the CIA system. The whole shit is bugged. The minute you get gas in the car, y'all gonna get arrested. <laughs> no. Nigga, the pull-up is the pull-up. You just go ahead and make it happen. Ain't no announcements. You, you ding? See, this is why we have to start getting in the mindset of protecting ourselves creating the grapevine network like we used to. You, you dig? Yeah, like, oh, well, yeah, Brother Wallace, Ozone. Look how they got Ozone. 
the people who turn him in. It ain't them niggas turn him in. But look, family, we got to get back to our our networking that we kept among ourselves. See, we were, for a long time, we were the masters of networking among each other, and the networking could be undetected to a certain degree. See, this is why, yeah, you move in silence, man. You got to move in silence. Yeah, 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 that open threats and all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got to move in silence. We, as black people, particularly Foundation of Black Americans, for a long time, we knew how to communicate with each other, and the communication would be undetected by the dominant society. We just, we kind of knew how to connect with each other. That was called the grapevine. You know, the whole, I heard it through the grapevine, the whole grapevine. That comes from us, the whole grapevine thing. That comes from foundational black American culture. Did y'all know that? A lot of folks don't know where these terms come from. A lot of folks don't know the whole grapevine that comes from foundational black American culture. The term came into public knowledge around the 1860s, around the Civil War. Why did that term become popular around 1863, around the Civil War time? During the Civil War, and I've talked about this before, the Union, they were bringing in black maroons out of the swamps, particularly in the Great Dismal Swamp of North Carolina, Virginia. They were bringing in black maroons, you dig? So they were bringing these black maroons to as fighters. They would fight for the Union. They were already militarily trained from being guerrilla fighters within the swamp. And also, the black maroons knew how to communicate in a way that would go undetected and white people didn't know how to crack the code. They called it the grapevine. Why did they call it the grapevine? Because of being in the swamps. In the swamps of Virginia and North Carolina, they had wild grapes and all of that. They had grapes there. Even in North Carolina, there's the there's a place called Grapevine Marsh. That's a swamp out there. So basically, the grapevine meant the swamp. I heard it through the swamp. A lot of information would go through the dismal swamp, and it would be um, distributed to different plantations. We knew how to communicate with each other. The swamp was like a centralized location for information that would go undetected. White people couldn't get that information. So when we say we heard it through the grapevine, that means we got information secretly that white people weren't supposed to hear. That's really what that's about. You from Eastern North Carolina. Yeah, yeah. Y'all got grapevine marsh up there. That's a swamp. And a lot of those swamps, they sell, they have their, not sell, but they have wild grapes in it. So that's where that comes from. So it's always been, a, and, and that was useful to the Civil War. That was one of the reasons why the, the, the North actually won, because they were using those maroon grapevine networks to get information to the South that the, the white Confederate troops didn't have access to like the the union the white union soldiers you know they do the morse code and all that old stuff and they would have runners and um the confederates would just kill their runners you understand yeah there's a reason why the california raisins were black all right <laughs> remember the california raisins there's a reason why they were black by the way but that's neither here nor there greenville north carolina but yeah listen so they would use those maroon networks to get information from the from the um, the troops in the north to the troops in the south, and they would use maroons to bring that information back and forth. Harriet Tubman was a maroon, by the way, so she utilized a lot of those networks. She was a spy for the Union. She would go down south, and again, some of that networking that she would do would go through the swamp. You're less than an hour away from the swamps. That's what's up. So. We got to understand 
how important our information is and how important our culture is. And I see we got some tethers in here. We we got some angry white supremacists and tethers in here. Boy, I see some tether trolls in here. Boy, they are in here heavy and they're very upset. Boy, we got some white supremacists and tether trolls in here. Oh, let me read. Somebody said I should read my super chats. Well, let me see. FBA rally was a threat to the dominant society because we had thousands of people in the building networking outside of the internet. Real talk, Mike. Real talk. That's real talk. See, when we get together and they can't monitor the conversations, see, that's the problem. See, they like for us to do everything online because they can just push a button and just record and monitor everything. See, that's why I like to do stuff offline. I like for us to get together, just face to face and chop it up. That's how you can get a lot of information going on. That's very important for us to do. I like for us to get offline and, and network and vibe and chop it up with each other because we used to do that anyway, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, family, in the 70s and 80s, remember when we were kids, we knew how to communicate with each other nationwide. We're my 70s and 80s babies. Remember growing up in the 80s, guys, they'll start a dance up in Milwaukee somewhere and that same dance will be down in Mississippi in a few weeks. They'll start a dance in California, that same dance will be in Atlanta in a month. You, un you understand? We knew how to get information to each other because we had that family vibe. We had that networking vibe. We had that grapevine vibe. We knew how to get together in person. You know, we still had the family reunions in the 70s and 80s. Remember? We had the big family reunions. That was a big thing with us in the 70s and 80s. Our family reunions were big. We had great family reunions in the 70s and 80s, didn't we? Our family reunions used to pop the hell off back then. The whole family come down. We have big ass barbecues and stuff and we would network and vibe with each other. And man, your cousin would show you a dance from Cleveland. You show them some dances from, from Florida and everybody would have this information going back and forth. So everybody be on the same page. So these dance waves would pop off. Yeah, our culture travels. Yeah. So they'll do the Smurf dance is start up in, in the north and then in a few weeks black folks all around the country doing the smurf dance you know I, mean? I remember some girls came down to Alabama that I knew as a kid and they were doing the snake and about a, three weeks later everybody down in Alabama was doing the snake these it would, it would it would just travel we knew how to communicate and it would I miss those times too See, we think that we can just get on the internet and everything is good. And no, no, no. A lot of good information you're going to get is going to be off the internet, man. You got to start getting out here vibing and really networking with people. We got to get out here and vibe and network. That's very, very important. You think? That's extremely important. So we got to understand how important um, our culture is. You think? And speaking of our culture, and this is what I don't like, when we have people who try to step to us as foundational black Americans with this, well, you niggas don't have no culture. And these are the main ones who are trying to siphon off of our culture. And we, we get on Twitter all day and we check tethers all day. We check tethers all day. Is Richard Sudan in the house? Shout out to Richard Sudan. That's our, that's our ally from the UK. Richard Sudan is a solid guy. I love Richard Sudan. That's one of our allied brothers from the UK. Real good guy. But listen, listen, when these people come around us and try to floss in front and try to denigrate our culture, we check them. Like this person right here, we made this person, they tried to delete their tweet. One of these tethers hopping on here talking about us. He was like, Yoruba people need more inventors, innovators, philosophers, economists, Nobel Peace Prize winners, scientists, and highly skilled professionals than comedians and entertainers. I pray we don't end up becoming like the black American community. Boy, these folks always have a bug in their ass about us. That's a projection. 
and I guess I, I almost guarantee he tweeted that from over here somewhere. That type of stuff right there. These angry, jealous tethers who try to siphon off of our culture while having disdain. You see, that's going to be checked. That is the new normal. I don't want to hear about us being xenophobic. That type of fuckery is going to be the new normal of being checked because it's off code. It's the same type of mindset that caused you to fail back home and we're not going to have that here. People are not going to denigrate our culture while trying to capitalize off our culture. Did y'all see up in Milwaukee? And, and this is June and we're having Juneteenth celebrations just like we're having a Juneteenth celebration at the Hidden History Museum. So up in um, Milwaukee, I think, I think this was Milwaukee, they had this Nigerian immigrant woman win the Miss Juneteenth <laughs> celebration. Now look at this. Look at this. It's countdown to Milwaukee's Juneteenth celebration from starting her own charity to securing a spot at UW-Madison, Mississippi. Where is this? This Mississippi? Where is this? No, Milwaukee. It's Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Okay, so this woman here won Miss Juneteenth. Hold on. I'm here with the Miss Juneteenth 2023 Adobe, and we are going to get to know her a little better with some rapid-fire questions. So to start, where did you go to high school? I went to high school at Moose King International Blackwood High School. Go Generals. <laughs> and where are you planning to go to college? I'm planning to go to uh, University of Wisconsin-Madison, majoring in global health on the pre-med track. What is your favorite Juneteenth vendor or thing to do? Uh, my favorite Juneteenth vendor or thing to do is probably listen to the music and dance. What are three characteristics that Miss Juneteenth embodies? Um, Miss Juneteenth embodies the three characteristics of driven, kind, and compassionate. Fuck, what the fuck? I'm, I'm trying to... I'm, what, what, what does that have to do with Juneteenth? Driven, kind, and compassionate. Yeah, she just kind of making stuff up. Oh, oh, no, no, this ain't no. Yeah, and a lot of us are pissed by this, as we should be. She does making stuff up. Um, driven, uh, kind, and uh, compassionate. <laughs> That's not what Juneteenth means. She don't even know. She's not of the culture. That woman is not a part of the culture. She's not a part of what Juneteenth means, if we're going to be real. People are clowning her thrift store dress. Oh, I'm not even going to even go there. I'm not going to even go talk about this, the, the Salvation Army dress. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there, but hold on, hold on. Perfect. And what does Juneteenth mean to you? Uh, Juneteenth means a lot to me, but number one, it means the, the uh, chance to impact others around me through my legacy and through showing black excellence. Through, yo, through her legacy? Through her legacy? What's her legacy? If we want to be real, she comes from some of the tribes that sold Foundation of Black Americans. If we we doing that, her legacy? It's not her legacy. Hold on. Hold on. I think that's it. Hold on. Oh, okay. Legacy. Okay. Her legacy. Okay. Now, look at this here. Now look at this. She actually won money. They made her Miss Juneteenth, and she got like $1,500. Now, these are the folks who are always telling us to, nigga, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. But, boy, when they see some money for us, boy, they will jump in the mix. Um, Adobe... Namachuchi, I think that I can't pronounce the name. She started her own charity, which supports and gives back to the community in her mom's Nigerian village. Okay. So you're getting money from Juneteenth and sending it to non FBAs. Okay. Look at, there's an article. Look at this article here. Hold on. Namachuchi, Namuchi, whatever her name is, was crowned over the weekend during Milwaukee's 31st 
Juneteenth scholarship pageant. Winners received a $1,500 scholarship where she be using when she heads to college in the fall. I'm planning on going to UW-Madison. Da, 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 da. She's a proud Rufus King International High School graduate. She started her own charity, which supports and gives back to the community in her mom's Nigerian village. Look at this. I started a charity called Nia, no, Bia Nakoda. It means come and collect <laughs> in Igbo. It means come and collect. Collect from who? Collect from us. I'm coming to collect from these FBAs. My mom and I, have been do, we've been doing this for six years now. Every year we donate 30,000 article of clothing, clothing, shoes, computers. We donate it to our village. That's my home besides America. That's the place I like to call home. It's where my bloodline is. Real, okay. Then what the hell are you getting a Juneteenth scholarship from then? You hollering about your damn bloodline, but it's, but you're getting a damn scholarship off of our le legacy. <laughs> okay. But then hollering about your bloodline. But when we say, hey, our bloodline and our legacy, oh, no, nigga, that's xenophobic. Because you know good and well, we cannot go get no Ebo scholarship or no Ebo money for nothing. We can't, go, if we go over there, we can't get none of that here. We can't get no Ebo money. Anything that's earmarked for an Ebo tribe, we can't get it. Let alone going to Africa and getting it. Do you think we can show up to some African village and some Red Cross organization is giving money to the Ebo tribe and we say, hey, I'm an honorary Ebo. You'd be dead in a damn ditch. <laughs> For the temerity. <laughs> Lord. And we're xenophobic by saying, hey, wait a minute, man. Wait a damn minute. You dig? Lord, boy, you, you can't make it up. <laughs> boy, and we can't touch nobody else's stuff. Anything Caribbean, Anything earmarked for an African tribe, we cannot touch it. We cannot touch it at all. Yeah. And boy, the vitriol for us. Uh, not only it, when we try to get something for us, we get tethers coming over here trying to cosplay as FBA. Like this Xavier dude, he's back at it. Black Americans, we, black Americans know that we do not deserve slavery reparations in 2023. Those who support it simply want the financial gain so they play along. We we don't deserve, this is him talking about we, and I had to put up a tweet to remind Xavier, you're Haitian. Stop pretending to be FBA. This is him a while ago. He used to tweet about his Haitian ancestry. He was loud and proud. My family was part of the Haitian bourgeoisie and we didn't fail anywhere. Oh, he was bragging about his bourgeois Haitian family. And now he wants to cosplay as FBA and gets mad when we check him. You think? Yeah, he's a Haitian troll. And damn all the other Haitian trolls who try to co-sign, because, yeah, we're checking his ass for pretending to be FBA, calling him out for being a Haitian tether. And then some of the Haitians hop in and want to defend him. Hey, Tariq, you made all that money with 1804, nigga. What does that have to do with us checking a Haitian troll? And number, number two, yeah, I made a lot of money off 1804 because I put a lot of money in making the damn movie. I didn't get no money from no damn Haitians. That was my money going into that damn movie because y'all tethers didn't think enough about your culture to put a movie about it out there like that. If you want to be real, 
you want to keep it a, a buck. But yeah, these folks with this scammy mentality, they come around us and try to, if they can't get in on something, if they can't squeeze a buck out of us, then nobody is supposed to get something. You dig? Because he knows he's not qualified for no damn reparations, talking all that we talk. But if they can't get a part of it, 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 they just want to blow up the spot. Speaking of blowing up the spot and speaking of culture, see, this is important why we understand different cultures. We, we got to understand the differences of culture because people bring some of their cultural mindsets in the mix and it's different from foundational black American culture. Remember the other day I was talking about this woman who's a rapper named Chica and she was on a plane and she was denigrating some children that was on the plane because they were crying on the plane and she was calling them all types of bitches and bastards and all just talking crazy about some foundational black American children and she got called out for it and yeah she's like yeah these twin bastards yeah these twins crying these little bitches these little twins just talking crazy about these kids who she thought were twins they weren't actually twins they were just around the same age, but they weren't twins. But she had all of this vitriol towards these twin babies who she thought were twins. And immediately I knew this was a tether. Now, this woman has doubled down on this shit. She's not backed down. Even though there's been a backlash against her, she's doubled down. She was like, yeah, it's still F your kids. Yeah, she denied having a funky smell on the plane. So, yeah, she's still up here talking about, yeah, F them kids. She's still on that. Now, when you see people talking about F some kids and all that, that's dirty tether talk. That's definitely non-FBA talk. And let me tell you, that that and this chica chick, she was going around, she was saying she's from Alabama, but she's a... She's not FBA. They were born. She was born in Mobile, but she's Nigerian. Her family's Nigerian. She's not FBA at all. And people on the plane were saying she was musty. She's like, I ain't. I wasn't musty. She said she took a bath <laughs> thirty minutes before the flight or some bullshit. You know? Mean? She said she took a bath thirty minutes before the flight or whatever. But she's up here denigrating these foundational black American children. And people called her out for that, as they should. But you better understand part of these people's culture. Part of the culture, some of the culture, where, where these people bring this stuff from. Now this woman comes from a Nigerian culture. And this doesn't represent all Nigeria, but come on, some of this stuff. Do y'all know in Nigeria, part of the culture of some of some villages there they think twins are evil energy they think do y'all know that over in parts of nigeria they kill twins so we better understand some of this cultural bullshit where this stuff comes from in parts of nigeria they actually kill tw twins because they think twins are evil omens did y'all know that let me show y'all this story about how they do twins over in certain parts of Nigeria. So you better understand the context of where some of this crazy ass talk comes from. Yeah, yo, fuck these twin bastards. Why these twins keep me? These motherfucking. You, you, that, that comes from something else. When I saw that, when we that that's not us. That ain't us. That's not our goddamn culture, man. But look at this. Let me show y'all something. Look at this. Look at this story here. This is out of Nigeria. Hold on. Listen to this. Listen to this. Hold on. Hold on. It's not time for the children at Heritage Vine Home in Kuje, Nigeria. Many of these little ones have survived acts of violence, some before their first birthday. Others have been cast out by their families because of cultural beliefs about twins. This is Davida, the girl, and this is David. They yes somebody every missionary rescued them after the their mother gave birth to them he had to quickly help them to bring the father to bring them to this place because if they had left them in the village the villagers would have killed them yeah yeah that that ain't our culture dude 
This ass, man. That ain't our culture, buddy. You think? Mm -mm. Yeah, we value twins. We don't, no, no, no. Two, we get two babies for one? Oh, we, that's something we value. That's something we, we love that. Yeah. Them Africans is us, man. No, not that. That ain't me. <laughs> that ain't me, dude. We don't do that type of shit. So, yeah, when this crazy ass big mammy up here talking about some twins all crazy. Bitch, what's, what, what's wrong with you? Yeah, you should be checked. You demonic buffoon. The hell, man. Yeah, we got to check people trying to bring that shit around our culture. Yeah, you, you're going to get checked. Give a fuck about you talking about somebody xenophobic. Don't bring that demonic bullshit over here with our FBA babies. The hell out of here. That ain't us. Man. But I digress, ladies and gentlemen. But again, I'm not I'm just talking about that that demonic tether class that's that's always in our mix trying to undermine us, see? We got some look, we got good brothers and sisters from Africa, the Caribbean who are riders. We rock with you. But the Chicas and all of them, man, y'all should have got them because we get them. We getting them. We're checking them. We're going to shut that bullshit down. They're not going to come around and just do all of this demonic ass shit and then nobody says anything. No. No, no, no. Not at all. But anyway, listen, guys. We, I think we had a great show today. We had a great broadcast today. Listen. Um, we got 5,000 people in here. We're in here heavy. Listen, family. Um, the Hidden History Museum, we got the... Juneteenth celebration. Speaking of Juneteenth, we have this celebration here. Um, if you guys want to be sponsors on this event, some of you black businesses out there, hit the link below. Go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com and hit the links within the site. Get involved. And if you just want to come to the event and have a great meal and enjoy some great comedy and great music and great drinks and great festivities, go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Get your tickets now. Ladies and gentlemen, get your tickets now. HiddenHistoryMuseum.com, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, y'all, that's been today's broadcast. Share this link with everybody. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. And I'm going to holler. Y'all be good. Puppy Akute and Lola.